Today we'll be reviewing a formula I believe can provide confidence or at least a peace of mind when investing in securities, which is stocks and bonds, particularly stocks. So the formula is price to book times price to earnings using a four year average that equals or is less than 22.5. I believe you have what's called a margin of safety present in that security. And so if you look at the picture on the screen, this black line, I say, is that 22.5 number. And so what I like to do is introduce myself to companies by buying a fractional share, say $2 of that company, for those of you that have a lot of money, you could do two shares. Uh, whenever a company is maybe in the 28 range, 30 range, higher than that 22.5, I like to put a very small amount so that I can keep an eye on that company. What I have found through these brokerages is whenever a company has a very bad day, the headlines are going to hit over and over and over. And for most people, it's very stressful. But for me, it's like, you know, game time. It's time to go hunt. So with this formula, what I like to do is when I size up a company, if it's greater than that 22.5, say up in this range, then I like to go ahead and put $2, kind of put a, a, a beaker on it so that it lets me know when it has a bad day. Eventually that company is going to come down because I believe it's overvalued. And so when it starts to come down, then I'm going to put $4 or buy four shares. Then I'm going to put $8 when it comes down again, then 16, and then 32, and then 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024. And what I'm doing is I'm raising two to the next power. So two raised to one is two, two raised to four is four, two raised to three is eight, et cetera. And so the theory behind this is, if you're not willing to put a thousand dollars on a company when it has 10 significant drops in value, why are you putting two dollars today? And so this filter to me, it just helps me so much because when I look at a company, if it drops in price significantly and I don't believe in what it's doing, the people that it serves, the communities that it helps, uh, their employees, the shareholders and repeat customers, then my money I don't feel is safe. And so this formula, I believe, provides for that confidence. It's benchmarked off of Benjamin Graham's formula, but he focuses in on the newest quarter and he does the square root and a bunch of other stuff that for me, I just want to stress test the company quickly, put my beautiful money to work and move on to the next company. And so price to book, this is the stock price divided by the book value. Book value is assets minus liabilities. And I'll show you an example of that. And then price to earning using a four year average. The reason I say that is sometimes a company makes a lot of earnings one year, maybe drops the next. I want to remove emotion. I want to look at the last four years of earnings. And I want to say, hey, based on these last four years, I feel it's relatively possible for that company to hit that earnings the next year. The forward PE and all that stuff. I think analysts do a great job, but they have a lot of emotion. And they're paying their mortgage. So they've got to put a number out there and then change it with the newest bit of information. Me, I want to step back, remove emotion, and look at stocks as if I'm buying the whole company. And so the way the theory holds is for price to book it, if the price is the same as the book value, which basically after you pay all the liabilities, that asset is worth the same as the uh, the price of the stock, then hey. I'm okay with this company taking 22 and a half years to pay me back. But if the price of the company, say it's 30 and the book value is 10, now that's 3x what the book is. I'm going to need this company to probably pay me back in seven to eight years. So it's a stress test if they have assets that cover their liabilities or not. That, that kind of is a radar for me on how long I should have to wait for their earnings to pay me back my initial investment. So now I'd like to show you just a couple examples of companies, or at least one. Uh, the first one is Intel, INTC. I use Walmine uh, for my 
quick analysis. It's free. You sign in and uh, you sign up for it. It's a really nifty uh, site. So I'm going to scroll down some here. So the current price, 37 20 cents. It looks like it's got a little activity after hours. It's okay. For what we're doing, we don't have to be to the penny because we're looking at four years and we're really just sizing it up as if we're buying the whole company. So for the book value, if you see right here, it's $23.45 is the current book value for Intel and they're selling for $37.20. And so that price to book is 1.62. So I'm going to put that in my formula in just a second. Now, for the price to earnings, they have it here. They show 6.28, and they show a forward PE of 10.83. But like I told you earlier, what I'm going to do is look at the four-year average. So I'm actually going to scroll down here, way to the bottom, and I'm going to look at their profit margin. And I'm looking at revenue, income, and profit margin. Really, that income is what I'm looking at. So in 2021, their net income was 19.86 billion. 2020, they're at 20.9 billion. 2019, they're at 21 billion. 2018, they're at 21 billion. So to play it safe, and I always play it safe, I think it's fair for me with my beautiful money to say 20 billion is what they're earning. And I can snap into the corner, uh, the, the quarter, and see it. Uh, is trending up, but that's okay. I don't chase trends. There's two people that invest. You've got speculators and you got investors. Speculators are looking at the trend on earnings. Investors are looking at the historical earnings and saying, hey, what's reasonable for them to be able to hit in the future? Another thing we'll talk about in the later video is that operating income, which I am obsessed with. I look at that all the time, but for another video. So let's go back up and use our $20 billion earnings for uh, Intel. I see their market cap is 154 billion, enterprise 152 billion, so not a big gap there. We'll use market cap. So what we're gonna do is pull out a calculator. Anybody can do this. We're gonna say 154.51 billion divided by 20 billion. That comes out to 7.73, okay? So we're going to times that. Remember that price to book, 1.62. So we're going to times that number by 1.62. We've got 12.51. This is significantly less than 22.5. And so a quick stress test for me is that there appears to me to be margin of safety present. I would argue that the price is somewhere around here on this distribution. I still believe it, you know, obviously in the short run, it can keep going lower. There's a lot of fear in the in the economy, but they earn money. They've got assets. And I believe that I'm. it's valid for me to continue to put money and drag down my average purchase price. Um, and so I think I'm going to cut the video with that. Again, to sum it up. This formula is a great filter to vet a company. I highly recommend you start out small because it's easier to drag down your average purchase price. Say your Intel, you put $2 at 50, and then you put $4 at 47. You put $8 when the price is 43. You put 16 when it's at 39, 32 when it's at 37 when it is today. And then you visualize, hey, I'm going to put 64 if they drop down to 35. I'm going to put 128 if they drop down to 32. I'm going to put 256 if they drop down to 29. I'm going to put 512 if they drop to maybe 27. And I'm going to put $1,000 if they drop to 23. And so if you can visualize that, when that price starts to fall and everybody starts panicking, you can, uh, you can really get excited. But having that discipline, I think, will go a long way. Uh, again, I believe that this formula can uh, serve you well, and I hope you have a great day.